cross. I don't believe somebody here might be going through a rough state in their life uh, that somehow you, you, you can't pray, you can't sing the songs of Zion. Uh, I know you're dressed and looking all good, all Hollywood, but, but at the same time we are wearing the mask and, and the devil has pressed you down and has taken away your joy. But I'm here to tell you that you've come to the right place tonight uh, because burdens are lifted at Calvary. I'm here to tell you that, that, that all of us, every last one of us, if it not come to you yet, it will come to you sooner or later. But we all will go through trial and affliction. Everybody that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer in this present life. But I'm here to tell you, my loved ones, it is better to suffer with Jesus than to suffer without him. That's getting hell twice. I don't want to go to hell. And if I'm going to hell, I ain't going to get it twice. Help me somebody. If I'm going to hell, I make sure that I'm going to live it up. I'm going to make sure that every party has my name written on it. I'm going to make sure that I drive the nicest car and I live in the biggest house. And if I don't intend to go to heaven, but my loved one, if you're going to make heaven your home, then you got to make up your mind that you're going to have some rough times down here. The devil is not going to let you sail on by into heaven and say, Oh, have a good time in heaven. Kiss Jesus for me. No, no, no. Every the minute that you decide to follow Jesus, the devil has you on his hit list. And he is going to try you every which way. Some of you never start having trial until you start coming to this tent. Some of you, everything was going well. Oh, but nobody had a complaint. You're, you're at, at your workplace, everything was going fine. Your relatives were impressed with you that you're doing well in life. But the moment you start to come by the victory in Jesus revival tent, all of a sudden your friends now want to turn their back on you. All of a sudden there is persecution on the job. All of a sudden when you go to the doctor, somehow the, the blood work comes back funny. The devil will try you. All of a sudden you're driving down the road and, and before you know it, somebody railroads you and sends you over into a ditch. My loved one, the devil will do whatever he can to discourage you. But this is how you confuse the devil. This is how you confuse him. That when he brings all his weapons and all his darts and all his animosity and all his temptation and all his depression. That when you can say hallelujah anyhow. When you can praise God from whom all blessings flow. When you can say like Job, though he slay me, yet I will praise him. When you can have a smile on your faith and say God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. He doesn't know what to do with you. He doesn't know whether to send you the rain or the sunshine. He doesn't know whether to shake up your life or just leave you alone. And the devil don't know what to do with you. So he just got to leave you alone. He didn't know what to do with John the Beloved. The devil was persecuting all the disciples. Some got beheaded. Some were given to wild animals. Some of them were torn by the rack. Some of them, my friend, were killed with bows and arrows. But lo and behold, they decided that they were going to throw John in a cordial of burning oil. I believe others who went before him died instantly. When they took them up, all they had was just bone. The flesh went from their bodies. But lo and behold, because John was serving God, because he had a relationship with Jesus, John was not nervous. He was not worried. He was just kicked back and relaxed. And he probably was fast asleep. And somebody may have said, John, why aren't you worried? He said, I've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. He's my friend and he's my God. I spoke to him this morning and he told me everything is going to be all right. And when John was thrown down in the oil, to him it was like a bubble bath at the Holiday Inn. And he came up shouting, oh, what a mighty good God. There's something down inside of me telling me to go on. It's the Holy Ghost down inside of me it's telling me to go on my friend they didn't know what to do with John and so the best they could do is to throw him out on the Isle of Patmos but while he was there he still wasn't discouraged the Bible said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day Jesus came by to hang out with his boy and said lo I'm Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end John I'm here to tell you don't worry your name is written in glory would you